thought I wasn't good enough. For my friends, for my family, I thought everyone was better than me. You see, I was born in a very creative family. My mom loves to decorate the house with different colors. She's a clothing designer, a published author, and can basically learn any language in a matter of days. My dad plays the piano. He can listen to a song once and play it back perfectly. He's also an excellent improviser and fills the house with amazing tunes. My sister studied drama in high school. She's an amazing dancer. She sings, draws, and studies art history. My brother makes music, and at the age of 16, is already designing his own clothing line. Coming from an artsy family changed my perception of life. It made me look at all the different colors around me, look at all the possibilities of studies and careers, and made me try a lot of art styles. I tried cello, piano, dancing, drawing, painting, writing, acting. But for some reason, I still had that internal fear. The fear that I wasn't good enough. Feeling ugly, feeling wrong, even for my family. But being the typical young teenager, it wasn't just the creative arts that made me feel less than. I didn't feel comfortable in my skin, and I didn't like the way that I looked. Like when trying on clothes in the store, I was the one who just looked gross. Or at least that's how I felt. But how I wanted to feel wasn't gorgeous. It was much more that I wanted to belong. Around this time, I started watching a YouTuber called Zoella. Among her many videos, she made lots on beauty and makeup. I was amazed by her style and how flawless her makeup looked every day. So I was inspired to try out what she did. And that was how I discovered makeup. All the colors, textures, brushes, brands, shimmers, glosses, powders, all the possibilities were endless. While my dad was playing with piano downstairs, I was, I was playing with makeup upstairs. While my mom was creating with, diff creating with different colored fabrics, I was creating with different colored eyeshadows. I could transform myself with makeup, accessing different parts of myself that were locked up deep inside, too scared to be shown to the world. At a time when my friends and I actually called ourselves ugly potato bags, when I transformed myself, I felt validated, like I could wear something that for once didn't make me look like a bag of potatoes. And suddenly, when I least expected it, I started to feel like I belonged to my family and to myself. With my makeup brushes in hand, I knew I could make my face stand out. If my body wasn't good, my face would be. I was creating new identities for myself every day and posting them online. I didn't care that my followers didn't know what I really looked like. I really didn't care. I wanted to be weird and I wanted to stand out. Ever since I was little, I was always the girl on the sidelines. I didn't have many friends. I didn't put my hand up in class or ask questions. I was too scared to ask questions, even if it was really necessary. I didn't want to be of any inconvenience to anyone. Being so introverted meant my emotions piled up, and I had no outlet for them. When I say this, I want you to picture a bucket, a big blue bucket. Imagine this bucket being filled up with a little bit of water every time I get angry or sad. But buckets have limits, as we all know and my bucket can overflow quite often. And when it does, it spills on the floor and soaks everyone around me. PTSD psychiatrist Bessel van der Kolk said, as long as you keep secrets and suppress information, you are fundamentally at war with yourself. I am constantly at war with myself. And when there is war, People get hurt, but these people are my family and friends, and I don't want to hurt them. So I try my best to subdue it by doing things that I enjoy, like doing makeup in my room. I now have so much passion for makeup that whenever I close my eyes, 
I picture myself applying the perfect winged eyeliner, and it makes me feel calm. Research says that creating art such as, draw such as drawing or writing can help you process your thoughts. All those thoughts are all bottled up deep inside. So after a long day of school, when deciding if I want to do homework or makeup first, I choose makeup, I go up to my room to start my three-hour transformation journey. I have discovered that I love becoming other versions of myself. Not only does it allow me to feel a certain way for a certain moment, but it actually allows me to feel safe to express and to be anything, whether it be ecstatic, sexy, emotional, crazy, or even beautiful. I don't understand all this controversy about women wearing makeup. It's become such a kerfuffle. <laughs> Men tell us that we don't need it and that we look better without it. And when we don't wear anything at all, we are told we look tired and sick. Although there's nothing wrong with women not wearing makeup for themselves or to make a statement, sometimes it's not about needing. Of course no one needs makeup, but needing and wanting to wear makeup are two different things. And I want to wear makeup. One day, I asked my brother what he thought of my makeup, and he said, I like that you go out of your comfort zone and try different kinds of looks. This surprised me because instead of telling me I don't need it, like so many men can and do, he actually encouraged me to use it a lot, which is a great thing because I love all the parts of myself that I found through makeup. And here are five of myself that I'd like to show to you. <laughs> Babette the drag queen. <laughs> when I want to express my ultimate femininity while embracing the underlying masculinity. Babette the unusual. She comes out when I don't want to be overlooked. I choose this when I want to stand out to, and challenge people's perce perceptions. But about the natural, as I say in Dutch, who God may have happen, or how God shaped me. I choose this when I want to enhance my natural beauty. Thank you. <laughs> Babette the creative. When I want to challenge my skills, when I want to work with new colors and really use my face to create art. And lastly, when I'm processing the darker thoughts in the back of my mind, I bet the scary emerges. <laughs> and to be honest, I like surprising and shocking people. These different selves made me realize that my face is my own canvas. And when I am holding the brush, I am in complete control. But being in control is not the norm for me. Last year, I started seeing a therapist because my smart mom kept asking me over and over if I needed one. And to stop her from asking again, I said yes. <laughs> It was hard, a lot of crying, anger, shame, and it was really uncomfortable. But talking about my feelings and events that were happening, knowing that the therapist wouldn't tell anyone helped. After a few months, she asked me if I wanted to do a test 
to see what level of depressed I was. So I did, and while some things turned out to be normal for my age, I was diagnosed depressed. And it wasn't a shock to me because I had secretly known this by the age of 11. It would have been a shock if she had told me I wasn't depressed. I hate to say it, but depression had become part of my identity. When I was in Belgium last winter, I had a really bad time. I had mental breakdowns and panic attacks. And I felt like I couldn't ha handle it anymore. So to soothe myself, I stayed in my apartment building and did my makeup every day. My looks were becoming crazier. I was doing things I'd never done before with colors that I would never normally use. I used reds, greens, purples, blacks. I was confused why this was happening, so I did some research. Using the BMC, using the Manchester color wheel, the BMC medical research mythology says that in describing their moods, a lot of depressed people gravitate to the color gray, and non-depressed people would say yellow or blue. But I don't really gravitate to the color gray. It makes me feel lifeless, and it doesn't give me joy. When I transform myself, I prefer to be bold and use a full color palette. My favorite color is the rainbow, a good balance between every shade. Maybe it was because I was feeling so gray in Belgium that I had only one way I wanted to express it, with color. I wanted to hide how I was really feeling. I had this urge to look my best. By the time I finished my makeup, I felt amazing. Suddenly, I could walk down the street as confident as ever, even though on the inside, I carry a lot of dark feelings around with me. I'm well aware that I'm not the most depressed person out there. Although when I'm sad, I'm told, Everyone's sadness is different. That doesn't mean yours is any less important. I always thought that depressed people were depressed all the time. But I've realized it's not a one-size-fits-all. It affects people differently and comes and goes in response to life's events. I know this personally because right now I am doing better, even though I feel weird saying that, especially as I'm about to leave home and school and I'm not sure what the future holds for me. Being depressed was and still is part of my identity. And it's impossible to lose part of myself so quickly. So, I'm not, so I know it will be back at some point. But I'm not as scared as I once was, because I know I have my makeup kit to help me through. And I don't want to say it was all because of makeup that I'm feeling better. It was a huge factor but rather through the art of creating that I've found a, that it's become easier for me to accept who I am as a human being. Sometimes I do still feel that I'm not good enough, not worthy enough for my friends, for my family, and that everyone out there is better than me. But I'm grateful to have found a way to lift myself in difficult moments. And even more, I can actually say that I celebrate myself through makeup. Thank you.